Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to talk about Pokemon, and we're going to talk about um, connecting with the Dungeons and Dragons community and how that can be very challenging, um, just from a scheduling perspective, and um, and how you know um, how the physical table really matters and how we strive to really remain there. All right, let's jump in. So basically, uh, I just want to kind of give a field report on my my Dungeons and Dragons activity. Um, you know, so it's really important to me. You know, I um, I talk about Dungeons and Dragons every single day, right? So I have to eat. Like, I don't know if you're aware of this, but like, you know, business people will talk about eating their own dog food, right? Like, so if I'm you know if I'm telling you how you should play Dungeons and Dragons, I have to play Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like you know, it's really important and. It's almost like a haunting terror to me to become one of these squawkers who play, who talks and doesn't play, right? Like, you have to, you know, you got to put in the time at the table, and it's really important to me, right? And also, I have to say, like, I, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful of, of people who play on, online, but I also, I really feel like... I'm talking about top tier Dungeons and Dungeons Dragons, and I'll tell you right now, in my humble opinion, top tier Dungeons and Dragons does not happen away from the physical table. And you're like, what about Matthew Mercer? He plays at a physical table. They they literally built a half a million dollar. I think they built a million dollar room to play Dungeons and Dragons in, right? And they play at a physical table. There are cameras there, and the game is streamed, but it's not five people getting together online. I really I really feel that Dungeons and you know the the important part of Dungeons and Dragons is, you know, seeing your friends and talking with your friends and connecting with them. And, um, that gets complicated too. Cause I also do believe that there, there should be a, like that we should be growing into, um, playing Dungeons and Dragons with the best players we can find rather than with our friends. But that, you know, but I, one of the things like when I talk about Dungeons and Dragons, I, I'm talking about things that are five, 10, 25 years in, in ahead in the culture that I'm trying to manifest now, right? Like, so, you know, so I am still playing with friends, period, end of sentence. But I do really believe the model for Dungeons & Dragons does kind of match, should be sports, like, and so you should be getting the best Dungeon Master you can, the best players you can, but I want to be super honest, I'm still, I'm still playing with my friends, that's where I'm playing, and, um, and, and I am dedicated to physical tables, right? And that is challenging. And I, and I just want to encourage you, if you're out there and you're having a hard time holding your table together um, and keeping, uh, you know, and key, and juggling your, your Dungeons & Dragons um, obligations and duties, you're not alone. It is very hard to play physical table Dungeons & Dragons. It is not easy, right? And... Um, now, a lot of people will tell you it's easy. Well, actually, you know, um, DM James, like, he's he's over there. And he 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 had a period where he, you know, he wasn't playing for a while because, you know, players bounce out in and out for all kinds of reasons, right? And actually, it's not just me. A lot of people will tell you, if you're trying to play, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, physical table, it's just hard, right? So I want to give you my, my, here's my field report, right? So I am running... Um, a Kryn Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen campaign, that is once a month. I am running an Eberron campaign, that is once a week, okay? And I've been, and the reason for this video today is I have been incredibly blessed to be invited into a Pokemon Dungeons and Dragons game. I am extremely excited. So I'm going to get to play this Sunday. Woo! I'm very excited about that. Um, and the structure of the game is it is literally uh, Pokemon. It is Dun It is literally fifth edition Dungeon Dra Dungeons and Dragons. Woo! I'm very excited about that. Um, and then it is literally Pokemon, and that means that every player in the game has a Pokemon player character. Now I was this was I was I was a little disappointed in this. I I don't understand why the dungeon master did not structure this to be you're a trainer and then you capture Pokemon and you trade Pokemon and you breed Pokemon and all the cool things that you could do. But for some reason, the dungeon master uh, has manifested this so that you actually play a specific Pokemon, right? Now, that's not the direction I would have went, 
but I am extremely excited about this. And the reason why I'm extremely excited about this is I am a huge Pokemon fan. Now, what's really fascinating to me is the moment I heard about this and I got the invite, I was just fascinated with how this was going to be structured. So one, this Dungeon Master, who I'm going to identify it as my Storm Dungeon Master, okay? This Storm Dungeon Master has, um, has spent three months taking the math of how Pokemon's level and doing the division and working... And so basically, what he did was he simply did the math to transfer Pokemon levels, Pokemon powers, Pokemon evolutions into the 20 levels that exist for Dungeons & Dragons and then mapping the, the abilities that they have directly to spells and feats. Brilliant. I, I am fascinated to see how he actually executes this. Um, and one, and I was extremely excited because as soon as he invited me, uh, he, he friended me on Facebook, right? And it, we, we, we talked about this over a physical table meal. We had dinner together, right? And um, so he, he immediately sent me this collection of documents and it's his work, right? It's it's a an explanation of uh, of exactly what the um, what the storyline is, and really what he's done is he has mapped this to the um, Pokemon Diamond uh, video game, and so that's the time frame. Although all the regions are in play, right? And um, and I'm just extremely excited to see how he's taking one of the honestly one of the most exciting intellectual properties in the world and mapping it to Dungeons and Dragons but I can I can tell you right now I'm extremely excited about this because um, this person has done a absolutely phenomenal job of matching their excitement for uh, for Pokemon with a, a very level-headed hard work approach to do to converting this into Dungeons and Dragons, and I'll tell you, I love Dungeons and Dragons so much, and oh, and I love Pokemon. But what does that mean to love Pokemon, right? If you love Pokemon, and I, I immediately I was really blown away with with like how we connected, even though we weren't the same type of Pokemon fan. So he is a literal play the video game Pokemon fan. I am not. I have literally never played a single Pokemon video game traditional. I do play Pokemon Go, but I was a fan of Pokemon for years and years and years before that. And the reason why is I have four kids, right? So with my youngest son, with my oldest son, with my oldest son, right? We I played um, in uh, in Pokemon CCG League. I played in a Pokemon CCG League, right? Um, which um, and we played. We played for years, right? And I would actually bring him to Toys R Us when it was still open. And we, to this day, we have Pokemon badges from that, right? And then I would read him Pokemon books from the library, right? Which is wild. And then um, over the years, I became interested in Pokemon. And then I began, on, and because I'm close to Dungeons and Dragons, um, Wizards of the Coast owned Dungeons and Dragons and the Pokemon CCG license at the same time. Nothing escapes the orbit of Dungeons and Dragons. So Pokemon became even more special to me because it was held by the same company, right? Like, you know, uh, you know, when Pierre Atkinson had all the money in the world, he's like, oh, I want Pokemon and I want Dungeons and Dragons. Good picks, buddy. Right? So um, so that that's really exciting to me. Um, and then I also played in a Pokemon collectible card game league for several years uh, for about a four-year period uh, competitively um, in an every Sunday like 1 p.m. to like 4 p.m. league um, and we would actually play the um, uh, the release the release schedule so like they have these release events and you actually can play and you get all the booster packs and it was really fun it was really fantastic so I'm a huge Pokemon CCG fan and I fell pretty hard into Pokemon Go like many 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 people and all along the years, you know, um, I also at one time owned the Pokemon um, role-playing game. There is actually a, an actual real Pokemon role-playing game. 
boy, I don't know what happened to that thing. Uh, I ran it. I ran it a few times, and it, and I think I, it still may be in my house, which is like, so that's boy, that tells you. Um, although I've got, I don't think it's in my house because I actually I've gone through a lot of my treasures recently, and I, I don't think there's much left in the house that I'm not sure is there, right? So, oh, except for my Magic the Gathering cards, I have easily twenty to thirty thousand Magic the Gathering cards that span literally back until 1993. So, so that is still a dungeon I am exploring, but I am extremely excited about this. And I think the thing that really is exciting to me is Dungeons and Dragons truly is, I'm, I'm so convinced of this, right? It is a filter for the most charismatic, intelligent, um, confident people on the planet. And their, and the, and the network of interests they have is truly stunning. So, um, you know, so last year was a rough year. At, at, in the fall of 2022, um, a two and a half year Dungeons and Dragons table that had no less than 10 players and no less than seven Dungeon Masters sharing multiple Dungeons and Dragons worlds just exploded into fragments of friendships and fragments of relationships. And it was a very bad ending to the year. Um, I don't, the more I've heard, it's not that un, it's not that unusual, right? Like, again, if you have super charismatic, super confident, super intelligent people, there's going to be some clashes at times, right? And so I have no, I, I'm beginning to, I can't, no, that's not, I don't have an, it, it, I can't say no regrets. I really can't. Um, but I am starting to make peace with that period. And I think, and I, no question, I think that the period to, of the time spent was definitely worth every minute but I am so excited to be building a new network, a new Dungeons & Dragons network. People who are in my local area who love Dungeons & Dragons and are willing to share their worlds with me. And, and I'm also extremely excited to be at the player's table again. That is really exciting, right? Like, um, I lo oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I love building worlds for people, right? But the reality is, you know, I'm incredibly excited to explore uh, the Storm Dungeon Master's vision of the Pokemon world, and I'm extremely excited to dive into that world and to be able to experience it from the perspective of a Pokemon. So I could choose any Pokemon, and I uh, that I wanted to play, and guess what my Pokemon that I chose was. One, two, three. Fanfy! All right. So uh, I'm a huge fan of Don Fan. Don Fan is my absolute favorite um, Pokemon. Um, I could not play Don Fan. You have to play to the to the evolution. Now, what's wild is Don Fan recently got some more evolutions, which is really exciting. However, guess what? I might Pokemon that Don Fan, right? Because Don Fan has been my favorite Pokemon forever. So I might I might Pikachu that Don Fan. Like so I definitely love Fanfi. I'm gonna really enjoy playing him as Fanfi. But then when I reach Don Fan, I may not want to go to any of those higher evolutions and just remain at the Don Fan level. Um, which we'll see if the Dungeon Master will allow that or not. You know, so so it's really kind of exciting. I'm extremely excited about this. Um, and I, I just, you know, I want to, if you're out there and you're trying to remain at the physical table, playing Dungeons and Dragons at top tier play with top tier people, I really want to encourage you. It's not easy. It's hard, right? Nothing in this life, uh, that is valuable is easy, right? So, um, you know, take the slings and arrows, stay in the mix. Don't give up and go to, uh, to, um, online games you know, seek out the people who love Dungeons and Dragons in your local area. It's, I truly believe it's worth it. And, uh, and if you would, if you're a Christian, give me a prayer that I'll be able to bless this group, um, with, uh, level, consistent, sound, um, play, and that I will be a blessing to everybody at that table. If you're not, uh, send your vibes to me. <laughs> Every single word, uh, every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.